What's up everyone, it's your boy Nornrad89 here bringing you yet another 31 on 31 video. This time we're going to be talking about creature features. I want to give a shout out to Cody Leach and the other members of Autop Stream for kicking off this whole thing. They have a bunch of awesome videos so I definitely suggest checking them out and sending them some love. So let's get down to this list. Roll it. films to get through seven different franchises i believe so let's kick this off with number 31 and that's going to be jaws 3 in 3d now this film has a few things going against it for me number one i hate shark movies number two this is a prime example of a movie that graphics do not age very well like when when you look at some of these shots and keep in mind that these shots were in 3d so it just doesn't age very well at all and third it has a story that'll just bore you to death and that's absolutely it so number 31 jaws 3 in 3d number 30 is going to be jaws 4 or the jaws revenge definitely another film oh no another shark film so not good for me and it's a prime example of a company that's trying to just make money off of the name of a film that was popular like the very first one so definitely is not that great a film and bring in the whole cognitive thing of a shark having the ability to want revenge and follow this family up the coast like it's just it's weird stuff not great at all. Definitely a horrible movie. So Jaws 4 sitting here at number 30. Number 29 is going to be Critters Attacks, a made-for-TV film. Definitely by this fifth film, you can definitely be crittered out by this time for sure. Not that great of like story at all, but I do love me some D. Wallace. Definitely, I'm down for that. There's some decent gore, but it's just not a great film at all. So sitting here at number 29, Critters Attacks. Number 28 is going to be Jeepers Creepers 3. And the only reason that this one, this is a very bad movie. The only reason that this one beats out the other ones lower on the list for me is I am a sucker for the Creeper. It is a really good character. And that's why I like this film better than those other ones. But this is a very bad film. Tonally, completely different from the first two. And it's it's not really a third film. It's kind of a, a beginning to the first one, or an after the first one. It takes place before the second one, so it's just weird stuff. It was kind of like a script that I don't think even had full potential at all, and they just kind of threw it out there. So Jeepers Creepers 3, number 28. Number 27 is going to be Critters 4. Definitely the least amount of Critters action, I believe, in this whole franchise. And it's kind of a ripoff of an alien storyline that we've already had like before. So it's definitely a film like it takes place in space and that does serve the purpose of the Critters because they are from space. So it's, it's cool we finally got to see one in space. But it just could have been done so much better. I think Brad Dorff's in this movie too. <laughs> so it's like there's some weird stuff in it. Like I said, it's just not a lot of critter action. Too much human stuff going on. So that's why it's sitting here at this number 27. Number 26 is going to be Jaws 2. And as I said, I'm definitely not a fan of shark movies. That's why you're finding a lot of these Jaws films here at the bottom. But Jaws 2 was definitely a great departure from the first one giving us like so much it's like a such a bloated movie a lot of run time just not a great story and the characters in this they don't really vibe or help each other at all like to serve the story or keep you interested or anything like that so Jaws 2 definitely a disappointment to me as well 
Number 25 is going to be Critters 3, Leonardo DiCaprio. We have a Leo film on this list that's pretty crazy. This is one of his earlier first films, but Critters 3 is going to be sitting here at this number 25 spot. I had some fun with it. It's got some silly parts, but it's kind of more of just like a really bad ripoff of Gremlins. This was the one where Critters kind of really leaned more towards doing some of that jokey Gremlins type stuff. And like in this film at all, like there's no time in this film at all that I feel at danger or I feel the main characters are at danger. Like it's just a very, just not scary film at all. It's very funny and silly and it could have been, they could have went some other routes with Critters and maybe did a better third film, but just having it all centered in like this little, um, area where they all live in this motel or this like apartment complex where all the characters live it just it doesn't feel dreadful or anything like that so that's why it's sitting here this low on the list number 24 is going to be alien resurrection we have our first alien franchise film making its appearance at this number 24 spot and this is a film that i've given a lot of watches and i've given a lot of chances to but i'm just not down for this alien the like the storyline the way it goes the way Sigourney Reaver plays this weird cloned Ripley and just the, her character is so much different from the other Ripleys that we have in the first few films. So it's just not, I don't vibe with that. I don't like all the crazy characters like Ron Perlman and Winona Ryder and all the wild actors and stuff they got to be in it. So it's just a weird film that didn't grab me. And like I said, I've given it many watches and I feel like it's just, it's definitely the weakest of the alien franchise in my opinion, for sure. So alien resurrection sits here at number 24. Number 23 is going to be Critters. We're back on the Critters train, and it's going to be the first Critters film, the one that kicked it all off. That was still kind of a little ripoff of the Gremlins movies, but it's centered in this little small Hoboken town and everything about this kid and his family, and it's got some interesting characters in it, and it's just it takes a while to take off for me, and that's what the problem is, and it's not like... I like Gremlins because it's kind of tonally crazy. Like, it's comical and it does wild stuff. And this one's more just centered to this family. I don't really care about this nowhere town, wherever it is. Like, it's just, I don't really care about these characters that much. And the Critters action isn't something that really interests me or grabbed me in this one. So that's why Critters is sitting here at the number 23 spot. Number 22 is going to be Critters 2, and yes, I do think Critters 2 is the best of the Critters franchise. When I was doing this list and re-watching all these films over the last month and a half, I recalled Critters in my mind, and before watching them, most of the scenes and most of the things I remembered were from Critters 2. Yes, of course, we get that awesome character of Lee, the bounty hunter, who morphs into a playmate, and we get a whole topless scene. That was hilarious. Like Lee is one of my favorite characters just because it's a running joke of him trying to find the right body to morph into and everything. And then we get our child actor from the first movie coming back in the second one, and he's like this town hero because of what he did to save the town from the critters last time. So it just has all these funny moments. It actually takes place during Easter, which I thought was kind of cool. Like it's an Easter horror film, so that's pretty funny as well. But I think Critters 2 is the one that I have the most enjoyment with and the most good time with. So that's why I like it the best out of the Critters franchise. Number 21 is going to be Predator 2. And this is definitely one that fell short for me in the Predator franchise because when you watch it, the graphics look worse in my opinion in this one and it's just kind of like this off world take of LA this extreme California crime world and the predator coming down to our planet and it's it's really cool to like have him set in that kind of world I guess but just the graphics don't really grab me like you know Danny Glover and Gary Busey I didn't really find them interesting or likable in this film at all so Predator 2 was definitely a letdown for me in the Predator franchise out of all of them. We get a kind of a cool setup for Alien vs. Predator because when Danny Glover gets on the ship, we do see a xenomorph kind of skull as like a trophy in the trophy case of the Predator. So that's kind of a cool little snippet in the movie. So I like that. Number 20 is going to be Gremlins 2, the off-wall sequel to the first Gremlins. This movie is out of control like the director and writer definitely strive to put some wild stuff in this film like I said we got a female gremlin we got like a spider gremlin 
the puppetry work is really good in this movie like give it up for that and we get phoebe cates and the other character the male character from the first film coming back in this one but it's just totally way worse than the first film it's off the wall crazy serious comical dark and got some weird twisted stuff in it that just jokes that might not land they're just really weird jokes and like as i was saying before like this is a this is kind of a weird 31 on 31 because the bottom movies on this list are kind of really really bad and then once you get up to the top part of this list we got some really great films but gremlins 2 sitting here at number 20 Number 19 is going to be Aliens 3, and this is definitely a film that I don't have as many problems with it as a lot of other people because of the beginning. A lot of people hate this film because they retcon Alien 2 or Aliens and kind of ruin that ending, that success that Ripley has with Newt at the end of that movie. But I kind of like this film because it's it's kind of like it's like almost like the beginning of Aliens. Like it just rips your heart out with Ripley. You finding out that she's been asleep for so long and has no idea. Like her daughter aged and has lived a whole life and everything. So it kind of felt like that, you know, at the beginning of Alien Three. It just like rips your heart out. Like these characters are all dead. You're like, dang. And now Ripley's thrown into this new situation on a prison planet with all these male characters that I think do a really good job, like of acting. Like they all do very good. Charles Dance and Brian Glover are great in this movie. Like there's just all the side characters I really like. And I know they started filming this movie without a script, but a complete one. But it's still, I think, Alien 3. I don't have as much hate for it as a lot of other people. And I have rewatched this film. So definitely sitting comfortable here at the number 19 spot. Number 18 is going to be Jeepers Creepers 2. Definitely a higher kill count than the first film. We add in like this high school kids and this bus. And then we got a storyline of a father wanting revenge on the creeper. So we got some crazy storylines. But this one I feel is more... I feel like this one is more out of focus, like all over the place. We have this girl who's clairvoyant who can see Justin Long's character from the first film and, you know, just like the dad storyline, the high schoolers. Like there's a lot of stuff going on in this movie. And like I said, there's a higher kill count, but it's just it didn't feel I like the first one. Like the first one had a certain tone, a certain vibe and pacing that I really enjoyed. And it was kind of like a twist in the middle of that film. And I know you can't really do that in this one because we already know it's the creeper and everything, but it still just felt too different from the first film. Didn't live up to that intensity that I like from the first movie. So that's why Jeepers Creepers 2 is sitting here at number 18. Number 17 is going to be The Predator. Shane Black's story of his written story and director movie for The Predator. This was definitely a crazy movie. There's a lot of CGI in this film. It's very CGI heavy, but I like Olivia Munn's character in this movie. She's gorgeous, talented. She's a great actress, and I like Tom Jane and all the other kind of wild characters they get to be in this film. These characters are kind of like the people from the first Predator movie, like Arnold's crew, but not these military badasses, you know what I mean? These guys are more just kind of crazy off the wall, but they are ready to fight and ready to go after this Predator. And this one, we get kind of an introduction of a new Predator, this big morphed one who's been collecting genes from all over different planets and trying to become the most king alpha Predator. So it's like, it's, it's pretty cool. I like it. Because I love the Predator franchise, so it gave me a little something more. But it's the reason it's this low on the list is because it's very CGI heavy, and it's the third act is kind of off the wall. Like there's some crazy stuff in this third act that just it's all over the place. Like you kind of have to just be ready to buckle up, and you know it doesn't end very well. And I kind of hate movies that end on one-liners. That's always a big problem for me. Number 16, I know I might get some hate for this one and I'm prepared for the comments, but number 16 is going to be Jaws, the original one by Steven Spielberg. And as I said, I'm not a shark movie fan. And this one, I've rewatched Jaws many times. And this one for me, that first 20 to 30 minutes of this movie, I am just so bored. Like I can't get over it. I've watched it so many times. And just that first 20 minutes for me, I just 
don't even care about it that much. That's the problem I have. But once we get to the three, the actors on the Orca and their hunting jaws and everything and the, the way their chemistry is and the way things play out from that middle end to the third act, that saves it and really bumped this movie higher up on the list for me is because that third act and that whole ending part, it really does save it. But I could really do with like out the first 20 minutes of this film because I'm just the first 20 minutes I'm just so bored and I can't get into these characters and like they don't really grab me the only reason it saves it is like I said the chemistry in that third act and hunting down the shark and the way it plays out it just has a really good vibe and feel to it but I'm just like I said not a big shark movie fan and it's just was one that I think in my mind this is a film that's overrated it's it's good but in my mind it's a little overrated and I think there's for me this 31 on 31 list there's 15 other films that i would grab to watch before this film so that's why jaws is sitting here at number 16 so for those of you who haven't clicked off after that last fiasco that we just went through my number 15 movie is going to be alien versus predator and i was excited for this one i was totally there and on for the ride for this one because i love alien franchise i love predator seeing them battle in the same movie bringing them together i was so down for it even though this one has some kind of time line issues this is like if you try to fit this into alien and predator the timeline it's going to drive you insane but i still like the origin story of like the whole pyramid and the predators keeping the xenomorphs there and their humans and sacrifices and training their yauches to become full-length predator hunters and everything so I thought it was really cool. The snow like aspect of it is a cool setting, the Antarctic snow aspect. But where this film kind of falls flat for me is, like I said, the timeline issue and it's PG-13. If this movie was rated R and kind of had a little bit more character development and some better writing in it, more connections to the other franchises, it would be a little bit higher up on this list for sure. Number 14, we're going to keep with the Alien vs. Predator, and number 14 is going to be AVP Requiem. Uh, yes, I do like Alien vs. Predator Requiem better than the first Alien vs. Predator, and the real reason is basically for all the reasons that people hate it. It's a very dark film, but when I think of it as dark, it I could still see the stuff going on in this movie. When I think of dark, this movie is kind of like John Carpenter's The Thing. Like, this movie goes there. It is dark. We are killing children. We are getting after pregnant women. Like, there is some dark stuff in this movie. But when you think about it, it's a pred alien, like, xenomorph mix, and they don't care about us. They have no emotions like that whatsoever. So, of course, like the most gruesome things you could think of, they do in this film. And the predator in this movie makes all the other predators from Alien, from the first AVP, look like, like wimps. Like, this predator is a boss. He is going around slaughtering aliens, getting rid of the evidence, killing people. It has a more slasher-type vibe. And that's probably why I lean more towards liking this one too is because I'm a fan of 80s slashers and this one definitely has a more slasher vibe to it. So AVP Requiem sitting very comfortable here at my number 14 spot. Rolling in at number 13 is going to be It Chapter 2. This was one that I have never seen. This is one of the films on this list that I had not seen when I started this list. And then binge watching all the movies over the last month and a half, I got to watch It Chapter 2. And I definitely don't have as many problems with it as a lot of other people did. This is a very bloated movie. Like, it is very long. It's got a really long run time. But it does some things different from the previous movie that I do like where it separates the actors and the characters as the adults more. In the other film, they weren't separated that much at all. They are very together the whole entire time. In this one, we get a separation when they get to go collect their tokens and kind of remember Pennywise. The reason we get those scenes is because in the first movie, they do all their recollections when Mike calls them and tells them to come back. All their recollection scenes happen right there, right off the bat once he calls them. But in this one, they go to meet him, and they still don't really even remember or know him when they see him at the diner. So they have to go through these moments and collect these tokens. And I still, like I said, is really like this movie because... Eddie, Richie, and Stanley are great characters. Some of the other ones, James McAvoy and Jessica Chastain, they could have done a lot better. I've seen them act way better. But Eddie, Richie, and Stanley are amazing, especially Stanley's letter at the end of this movie. Oh, 
it was it was perfect like i said so it chapter two if you dislike it or you hate it i urge you to rewatch it going with a new eye because this is a movie that has it has a lot of content like i said it's bloated but it's all there for a reason and i like pennywise the character that origin story all that world so it was definitely a film that i was there for and i'm excited for and i liked it when i got to watch it so it chapter two sitting here at number 13 Number 12 is going to be Gremlins, and this is a film that has definitely played a part because mostly nostalgia, but I grew up on this film. I love this film, and I love it for all the reasons that it's tonally crazy. It's kind of like a kid's film. It's kind of comical, but it's kind of really horror status and horrible. Like This film takes some dark routes, like Phoebe Kate's story about her dad dying in the chimney. Like <laughs> There's some dark stuff in this movie, and like I said, it's tonally out of control. But I love this movie. I like Gizmo is one of my favorite creatures in a film ever created. And like I said, it's just one of those films that gets a lot of replay value in my home. The kiddos love it. I love it. My wife puts up with our love for it. But Gremlins is still a great film and I love it. Sitting here at number 12. Number 11 is going to be It Chapter 1, a very ambitious film definitely a film that has a great young cast these kids are the main part of this movie and they totally sell it they all do their roles very well and if the kids were totally miscast this movie probably wouldn't have landed that good at all it probably would have just been a cop-out remake of the original it with some horrible cgi and people wouldn't have loved it but the kids in this film really sell their roles very well it's also very gruesome compared to the other movie the made for tv movie which they're able to do because it's not a made for tv movie but like i said they go very good on the gruesome aspect of this film and at the only thing it could be better and higher up on this list for me if bill skarsgård was better to me I, I just think tim curry is better and bill skarsgård i don't think he's a great pennywise and like i said there's some weird cgi in this film but the kid actors in this movie are amazing so that's why i like this film it chapter one now we're finally here to the top 10 and before we get to the top 10 consider dropping a like and hitting that subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all the videos i post and everything so let's kick it off with number 10 and it's going to be jeepers creepers the first one of the jeepers creepers trilogy this film definitely set itself apart it has a it set up and introduced one of the best new horror like characters in most recent years the creeper and we got really great character chemistry in this movie between justin long and uh, gina phillips we get great chemistry between them as the brother and sister and this is a movie that's really cool because it has this cool twist because when you first watch it it could be almost like this psycho killer like hitcher vibe type thing going on but once we get to the middle part and we get the reveal of the monster like it takes a whole new realm and world and i still love this film it has such a great vibe and this is a very unique horror film that i think when it came out it just it floored me i didn't think it would be that good this is one of those movies that i think i rented i didn't go see it in theaters i rented it and I was just like, oh, like just walking around. And I was like, oh, Jeepers Creepers, like what's this? Like let's pick this up. And me and my friend watched it and thoroughly loved it. Still to this day, I think Jeepers Creepers, the first one, is definitely better. Number two and three just never met or lived up to the potential or the bar that this one set. So Jeepers Creepers sitting here comfortable at the number 10 spot. Number nine is going to be It 1990, the made-for-TV film. And yes, a made-for-TV movie made it into my top ten. But this It 1990 movie, the uh, Stephen King's book, just like this whole story for this one, it totally grabbed me. The child actors I like in this one. I love the adult actors. Like I know this is a very long film as well. It's very bloated. And I think it was two parts when they released it on TV. But it's just, it's so much nostalgia. Every time I watch this movie or I catch this movie on TV, I sit down and watch it. Like, I just love it. Tim Curry is amazing in this film. To me, is miles and miles above Bill Skarsgård's performance. And I know this film leans heavy, really heavy on Tim Curry's performance and him carrying the film. But I still do think the adult actors and the child actors do really well. And I think th they feel more together and more like friends to me in these in this movie, in the 1991. They just feel so 
like themselves and so unique even when they grow up and like it just feels like those kids literally grew up and these are these people so that's why i really like this one like i said nostalgia might play a part because i grew up on this film and watched it so many times but it 1990 i think is an amazing classic and it sits here very comfortable at my number nine spot Number eight is going to be The Thing, 2011, and this is a movie that once I heard they were making a prequel to John Carpenter's The Thing, I was so on board. I was like, oh yeah, let me get in that. I love this world. I want some more content and some more storyline stuff, and this film is definitely really good. It's a prequel that we probably didn't really even need. But it's a prequel that answers some really cool questions. And if you watch it right before John Carpenter's The Thing, they blend so well together. They have a very similar vibe and pacing. And it's just really great. Mary Elizabeth Winstead is fabulous as the lead actress in this movie. She does the role so well. And it's just the only thing that this movie doesn't do well compared to the first movie is they lean on the CGI. And if they would have went with real, actual, practical effects, on-set practical effects, this movie would be a few spots higher on the list for sure. But The Thing 2011, they went with that CGI thing and going leaning more towards that, and the CGI is not really good at all, so that really did hurt the film for me. But besides that, everything else is on point the acting the story the pacing and as it lines up with john carpenter's the thing it's very amazing so definitely recommend checking out the thing 2011 if you haven't seen it already number seven is going to be alien covenant and i was so on board for this one as well because i was one of the few people that it's kind of Prometheus split the alien world into <laughs> into a bunch of like two sides. They really hated it or they really loved it. But I was I was on the side that really loved Prometheus and Alien Covenant. I really liked it because we got to dive more into the world of David and his psychology. But we also got the introduction of the first xenomorph. And yes, I know some people, they didn't need that or want that explanation and everything. But I still do think it's really interesting. And this film does a good job of not answering all the questions and that's what's cool about prometheus and alien covenant is they have so much info in them and there's so much about life and creativity and god and all these things but they still do leave a lot of questions unanswered and you as a viewer can kind of derive your own answers from these movies and i really did like alien covenant there's some terrible cgi xenomorphs in it but the killings are on point, the actors are on point, and the story is really well. It serves as a pretty good sequel to Prometheus, so I enjoyed Alien Covenant, so it sits here at number seven. Number six is going to be Predators, produced by Robert Rodriguez and starring Adrian Brody, and I can't remember her name, but she's also in New Mutants. She's amazing. She's in this movie, and she kind of looks a very similar to the chick from the first Predator movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger, but Predators, I was so down for. This was cool, getting a chance to see all these crazy, wild military characters and like these mil like just all these bad hitmen and villains from all over our planet get flown and dragged all the way to this predator hunting ground planet where they get to just hunt them down and practice using all their tools and become very good predator hunters so it's like really cool in that aspect we get danny trejo in this movie there's a lot of good side actors topher great topher grace is in this movie too and it's just a really good interesting storyline and the way it plays out is so cool and i thought adrian brody did really well he tries a little bit to be like Arnold Schwarzenegger, like more, that Monchismo badass, but he's more solo in this film. He doesn't want to stay with the other ones, or like he, you know, he feels like he's better on his own. But once he finds out what they're up against, then he's like, "Oh, I need the help from all the other people and stuff." So, it's still a film that I do rewatch a lot. Predators has a lot of great action sequences in it, a really cool ending. It's just a film that I was so down for, and is very powerful in the Predator franchise. Coming in at number five, yes, we are finally here at the top five, and all these films from like 14 up are all great, amazing films, like all these films, but these top five are grade A, probably four or five star films, or nine or tens in my book, hardcore. Number five is going to be 
Prometheus. Yes, I am a huge fan of Prometheus. I love all the stuff about the creation of God and wanting to find out where we came from and just the origins of so many, like so much stuff. It's it's more about the universe of the Xenomorphs. It took the alien movies that we love and created a whole universe around it. And it's just so much more like we can get other films that aren't just about Xenomorphs. Like they could be set in that universe and they'll be just interesting because of what Ridley Scott decided to do with Prometheus. He gave us so much more and it's so powerfully written. And like some of the characters do some silly things in it, like story wise, like what they choose to do. But I still do think like this film has so much to say and it's a really great film that I just I, I adore this film and like my wife's the complete polar opposite. She's the one she hates this movie, but I adore this movie and I love it. And she likes the old alien movies, but I love this one. I like the old ones, but this Prometheus one did serve very well and like I said, it came in at number five. It's very close to almost my favorite alien film. So Prometheus sitting here comfortable at the number five spot. Number four is going to be Ridley Scott's Alien, the very, very first film introducing us to Ripley, Dallas, and all those other cool, awesome characters trapped on this ship with this xenomorph that busts out of one of their crewmates' bellies. Like, oh, it's such a great, powerful, dark film. And a lot of people, like my mom will tell you, they went to see this film in the theaters when they were kids. And this was one of those movies that really scared you. This was one of those movies that will make you remember it forever and that might when the way my mom talks about it is the way I felt about it when I first watched it it was one of those movies that it really takes its time it's a slow build up but once it gets to that point it's so powerful so gritty and just grabs you and it's tense in every situation so alien sitting amazingly comfortable here at my number four spot Number three is going to be Predator with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yes, the first Predator film is the best of the franchise. I know there's other ones that have come pretty close and they're trying to, but that first film, nothing does it like that intro with that manly handshake between him and his friend. And then we get into this Monchismo war type film and then introduce this crazy alien that can cloak and hide in the woods and makes our military men look like chumps. Like, oh, this is such an amazing dark film. It's one of a kind for sure. I think we're going to get other Predator films in the future, but I really don't think they're ever going to live up to the amazing quality and that unique cast and style and writing that we got in that first Predator movie. This first one is just so powerful. There's really not a lot to say about it because so much has already been said, and it is such a great film, but I do like the gore in it. I love all the characters. Like It's just a movie that once it's on... It takes you for the ride all the way to the end, and it has an amazing payoff. So Predator sitting very comfortable here at number three. Number two, the runner-up. Not the top dog, but the runner-up is going to be Aliens by James Cameron, the sequel to Ridley Scott's Alien. This film took everything that we loved about Alien. You can hear my dog walking around right now if you're hearing that clicking on the floor. <laughs> but this took everything about the first Alien film and amped it up to 11 for us. Aliens has so many cool characters, like played by amazing actors, Sean Bean, Bill Paxton. There's so many good people in this film. And we get Ripley. It mixed in with all these military awesome like people who think they're all freaking tough and they can take out any alien or anything they run into and then come to find out that they're nowhere near as tough as Ripley because she's ran into this alien and experienced the xenomorph before and she has a toughness that you can only get from experiencing the stuff that she did in that first movie but aliens and we also get Newt who's an amazing character that mother daughter kind of bond between her and Ripley in the movie is one of the best character uh, stories to be along for the ride for and it's just such a great film by the time you get to that end and she's battling the queen you're seeing Ripley defending her defending her family fighting the queen who she just killed like all her babies and everything and set them afire so it's just a powerful movie that has an amazing payoff aliens is so perfect in every way 
and that's why it's sitting here at number two. But there is a film that I do like better than that, and that's The Top Dog. The number one film out of all the films on this 31 on 31 is John Carpenter's The Thing. I think no other film has ever done so dark and so much amazing horror and sci-fi in one movie like this movie. John Carpenter's The Thing has some of the best just gritty storyline stuff that grabs you and it keeps you on the edge of your seat like it's a movie that kind of makes you feel uncomfortable because you're like who do I really trust like it's like what happened if someone looked just like someone you know but they weren't and you had no idea like who to trust and who was really real and like it's just such a powerful film and it has some of the best arguably some of the best practical effects on screen that you're ever gonna see in a movie they actually took the time to build these special effects make these aliens and these like crawling spider heads and like blow these things up so it's actual real stuff and john carpenter took us on a ride that i will never forget it didn't hit that hard when it came out in theaters because they had the unfortunate sadness of coming out in the same year as et and et set up this whole vibe of loving aliens and they're coming to earth to help us and john carpenter's the thing when it came out people didn't want to see this horrific shape-shifting alien that was basically here just to annihilate all of the human race so but it's still a film that is unique in every way and like i said i've never seen a movie in my opinion that mixes sci-fi and horror in such a way that it just came out to this perfect piece i can't think of a way for this film to be to, to be better it's definitely grade a top 10 out of 10 for me john carpenter's the thing sitting here at number one thanks you all for enjoying another 31 on 31 list this is my second 31 on 31 i'll have a card in the top corner so you can go check out my other one that i previously did and for the second time a john carpenter film took the number one not to spoil anything but that is pretty powerful and shows you that i do really like john carpenter he is one of my favorite directors for a very good reason and thank you all for hanging out with me. As I said, go check out Cody Leach and the other members of Autop Stream. They have some amazing videos. Definitely send them some love. And thanks for hanging out with me. Peace out, y'all.